James Harden's just been traded to the Brooklyn Nets. The trade we were all making memes about when the season began has now come to fruition. And it was quite a big one, involving four, technically five, different teams. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, the straight up stupid, and how this trade affects not only the four teams involved, but the entirety of the league. To start things off, we're just going to look at what each team got and gave up, and we'll go from there. First team we're going to look at is obviously Brooklyn. I have the full trade details up here, this should be on screen. So Brooklyn received James Harden. That's it. They gave away Karis LeVert, Jarrett Allen, Torian Prince, and Rodion's Kuruks. With Dinwiddie out for the season, they no longer have a backup point guard in low depth across the board, specifically in the front court. And with Kyrie Irving pretty much off the radar for who knows how long, I'm not sure what they're going to do for the time being about a point guard to begin with. Bring in some random G League kid or free agent? Not a good look. They also gave up three first round draft picks and four first round pick swaps, which are essentially the option to swap your pick with the team you offer it to, but the team receiving the swap gets to pick if it goes through or not. The Nets gave up too much for a player that's going to ruin their system anyway. This trade is giving the Celtics Nets 2013 vibes on their end. But who's the Celtics of this trade? Probably the Rockets. The Rockets received all those picks previously mentioned, plus a first rounder from Milwaukee. They also received Victor Oladipo, Dante Exum, and Rodion's Kuruks. They gave up Harden and a second round pick. That's it. It's been clear that the Rockets need to rebuild for a little while at this point, stockpiling assets, specifically picks. Seems like the quickest way to do that recently. Tanking just doesn't ever seem to work anymore, and there aren't that many other strategies that work at all. The Celtics had one of the best rapid rebuilds in recent memory, partially thanks to the Nets giving up an entire franchise worth of picks. Similar story with the 76ers, along with a bit of tanking. So if you ask me, the Rockets made smart moves for their future, and acquired some veteran presence in Victor Oladipo, and not bad additions in Exum and Kubrick's. Mostly Exum. Sorry, Rodions. Next, I want to talk about the Cavs. The Cavs received Jared Allen and Torian Prince. Here's the good part. They gave up Dante Exum. Dante Exum. A player seeing minimal minutes in their system anyway, with the takeoff of the Sexland duo. For Jared Allen, a bright young talent and potential all-star, and Torian Prince, who's proven he can be a solid player in the league. The Cavs took a big win with this move, and now they have an absurdly stacked front court and a backcourt with all-star potential that could last for the next 7-10 to 10 years. They suddenly look like true playoff contenders. The last team directly involved worth talking about is the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers received Karis LeVert in a second round pick from Houston and gave up Oladipo. Not a bad move for the Pacers. Oladipo seems like a shell of his former self at this point, and LeVert balled out last season in a starting role. For them, this is an upgrade. The only true loser of these four is the Nets. But how does this trade affect the rest of the league? To be honest, either way, I think Houston is out of the playoffs this year. It doesn't affect the West very much. Eastern Conference, however, just got a bit more interesting. The Nets are either going to be unstoppable or like the sixth seed. If you ask me, it's the latter. Harden, Katie, and Kyrie on one team. Harden couldn't handle being on a team with Russ, who he was friends with. I just don't see this going well. And then obviously Kyrie already doing his Kyrie thing this season. Sorry Kyrie, but you know. The Pacers and Cavs both improved, somewhat drastically. Specifically, the Cavs are going to be exponentially better. Drummond and Love will have some help in the front court and sex... <laughs> Sex length will keep doing its thing. I'm sorry, I'm done. Um, the Cavs will still likely be on the lower end of the playoff race, but at least they're in it. And I see this team progressing well in the future. Of course, this is all assuming there's no issues in the locker room. Same with the Pacers. They didn't improve much, but they've already been pretty good this season, so I'll put them top three in the East when all is said and done. I know, a little crazy, but so is this entire prediction. Overall, it doesn't really shift the way things are right now. The league's already a bit broken at the moment because of the different off-season lengths and all that crap, and I figured it'd even out as the season went on. 
I feel like we all expected a trade soon, but I had no idea where it was going. It would have been the Nets, 76ers, or Celtics, we knew that. As long as it wasn't Boston, I'd be happy. That's the reason I had the weakest reaction to this trade compared to, for example, when we got Kyrie or when we got Kemba, or when Russ went to the Rockets, or when D'Lo went to Golden State. I just didn't care about this one. Although the, the length of my script compared to my others says otherwise. Anyways, that's what I got for you all today. I hope you all liked the video. If you did, share it with your friends. Make their day too. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. off we're just gonna look at what team <laughs> the entirety of the league to start things off we're just gonna look at what each team <laughs> the entirety of the league they also gave up three first round draft picks and four first round pick swaps which are essential <laughs> not a good look they also received Victor Oladipo, Dante Exum, Grodion. <coughs> that was a first rounder from Milwaukee. It's been clear that the Rockets needed a rebuild for a little while at this point, and stockpiling assets, specifically picks, seems like the quip. That's it. The Celtics had one of the best rapid rebuilds in recent memory. Oh my god, dude. There aren't many strategies that work at all. But the current standings may be the norm. I figured it'd even out as the season went on. <laughs>